In this video, we're gonna talk about tightening a loose axe head, as well as my two-year review on this multi-purpose axe from Husqvarna. It's got a 26-inch hickory handle, a hand-forged head in Sweden, and it's 1.9 pounds. It's comparable to the Scandinavian forest axe, which is done by Grand Forest Brooks, which is obviously a great axe, but that axe is twice the price. So if you're looking for a good buy, this axe is $90 US on amazon.com and the Scandinavian forest axe is $190 US. So a uh, really great tool for the price. I believe at one point that it did go up to $115 and it seems to be back down to $90, which is a really great price for this tool. Um, I also feel like it's somewhat important to mention at this point that uh, considering the current uh, state of our COVID-19 crisis, that uh, it might seem somewhat inappropriate to be up here marketing a tool. So I've been doing marketing my whole entire career. It's all I've ever done for work. And there has been times earlier in my career where I've marketed products that I didn't necessarily feel good about, but it was my work. Uh, I've made changes in my life to make sure that I'm only marketing products that I completely believe in. And this is definitely one of them. I don't accept any money from any companies to do reviews. Uh, I may work with various companies, but when it comes to actually reviewing a product and telling you that I like it, it's because I wanna do that and not because someone's paying me to do that. So um, if you wanna help our economy and keep money circulating and have, need an excuse to make a purchase of an ax from the comfort of your own home and have it delivered right to your door, um, this is a really great ax. So we're gonna jump into some footage that shows this ax in action and then I'm gonna get into the rest of the video that I shot a couple weeks ago. So, hope you enjoy. All right, so here we are, two years later, uh, back at the Bushcraft Shelter, back with the same Husqvarna forest axe. And uh, I've since put on about uh, maybe 150, possibly more days in this axe, since I first did a review on it two years ago. It's March, 2020. I did my first review on this axe in uh, 2018, March, 2018. And in that review, I said fond things of it, I really liked it and uh, I stand behind it. It's been incredibly good to me. This is the ax that I use more than any other ax. It has been on a few trips with me, but mostly it's been out here at the woodlot, uh, building shelters. I built a teepee platform with it. I'm preparing for my cabin build. I've built another, uh, another semi-permanent shelter with it, a tarp shelter, and just split a ton of firewood and I built chairs, it's just a great all-round axe. So uh, I have made a few adjustments. Uh, I made a new sheath for it, and I also made just this collar for it. So sometimes when you're splitting big logs or you're brashing and, and breaking branches off of trees, the, the handle itself will start to get a little banged up. So this leather collar just helps protect that. And then a new sheath that doesn't have any rivets in it and uh, just sewing together with some bank line pretty basic. I followed the same pattern as the uh, sheet that came with it. I just uh, made myself a new one. So that's it. Um, the first year it was totally perfect, no problems. Uh, after about a year, the head started to get a little bit loose. So that's what we're going to focus on today. 
the head getting loose is probably not the axis fault. There's three main reasons why I believe my axe head came loose. One of them was um, I use the back of my axe. I think it's called the pole or the butt. I use it to pound. Uh, Eric Sloan, an author that I, I really respect, he said that uh, no self-respecting woodsman would ever pound with the back of his axe or pound a wedge with the back of his axe. And although it's true, I probably wouldn't pound like a heavy duty metal wedge or I wouldn't pound uh, metal with the back of my axe. It's, it's a tool after all. I mean, this is a tool to be used. And when I'm out in the woods and this is the one tool I have with me, I got this and a saw and a knife. Um, I got to choose something to either pound a tent peg or pound a wooden wedge or just, I don't know, Sometimes when you're chopping firewood and you get the axe head stuck in the firewood, you need to flip the axe upside down and bang the back of the axe on the stump. So I do use that all the time. He says that by doing that, you can widen the eye of the axe head. So by pounding down this way, it's going to bend the metal and open that metal up and potentially loosen the head. That's possible. So that's one reason that it could have happened. Uh, more than likely, in fact, I know the reason, the time when I noticed that the axe head was coming loose, I had used it to pound into a stump or into a log, and then I used my axe handle as leverage. So I'm, I'm pounding my axe head into the end of a log, and then using the handle as leverage to help me rotate a log, primarily when I'm trying to peel a log. And sometimes that's my only choice. The, the logs are too heavy. It's hard for me to get a grip on it and rotate it. So by using this as leverage and getting another arm around the log, I'm able to rotate logs. So again, that's probably not something that's recommended, but it's, it's my tool and it helps me get the job done. And I'd have to come up with a different system. When the ax is right there, I can just use this tool to do that. So I'm beating the crap out of this ax and I'm using it for things that it shouldn't be used for. So I think it's only fair that uh, I expect that the axe head's going to get loose. But considering that was a, a year of hard abuse, and then with five minutes worth of effort, I was able to tighten it, and it's been good for another full year, it's, uh, it's an easy decision for me. Use the axe however you want to use it. Use it as a tool, and just learn how to fix it when that happens. Uh, the third reason that I think the axe head could have come loose is that I often have it beside the fire. So I'm using it to chop wood, I'm splitting kindling, I put the axe down, and it sits beside a fire all night which is going to dry out the wood and potentially shrink it. So um, three valid reasons why an axe head could come loose. Uh, it's probably, in my case, it's probably a factor of all three of them. But I'm going to show you today how to tighten that up. And then after that, we're going to just give you another kind of um, uh, breakdown of just ways that I use the, the axle state around to the end. We're going to fell a tree and chop it up and use it as firewood. All right, so tightening the axe head's really simple. Uh, I've already tightened this one and I need to use this axe today, so I'm not going to demonstrate on that one. Uh, so I brought this uh, little hatchet. We use this as an axe throwing hatchet to throw into stumps. And um, So if I bring it up close, you'll be able to see, hopefully if this focuses, there's a bit of a, a gap here between the handle and the head. If you start to notice that on your axe, it's time to tighten the head. Or if you notice that the wedge is coming loose or you start to see any, any, any movement in the axe head, you want to tighten it up. So the very first step is just to try to bring the handle back down to the head. So the way that you do that is by pounding the back of the axe. So again, I'm using the back of my axe. You could use a wooden mallet, but this should work fine. So even just that little tap, I'm starting to see it go. Okay, so we've closed up that gap quite a bit already. You could actually usually hear the difference. When it bottoms out. And I can see that the handles now come through the head a lot more. So that's good enough for me. Now this alone, just, just that technique, just that process of just pounding the handle, not don't pound the head of the ax down, you just pound the back of the handle. Just that process alone is going to help you get through the rest of a canoe trip or a camping trip and, or get you through the rest of the day's work. But if you want to take extra precaution to make sure that the axe head now stays tight, you got to go to the next step. And that is using uh, an antifreeze. Now this is not the, uh, I got the verbiage here. Okay, so you want to use 
a propylene glycol antifreeze, uh, not the automotive antifreeze, with a, which is an ethanol glycol antifreeze. So I use this stuff. Um, what caught my eye, as it says, is biodegradable, biodegradable and safe for waterways. This is an RV waterline antifreeze. This stuff seems to be working really good for me. And if you buy a jug of this, I think it's maybe 10 bucks. It's not expensive. And I'm sure it's gonna last you a lifetime of fixing wood in a handle. So um, just gotta put a little bit. And I just use a little tin in the bottom of a tin or any kind of a bowl. Just enough for the the whole head of the axe or the, the the end of the handle to be submerged. So you don't need to put the whole head in, just this last little bit. And I should also mention that when you do pound this down, you might notice that your wedge is coming out as, as well. So if that's the case, then pound that back down. But uh, in this case, it's fine. So that's it. I'm just gonna stick this into there and then let it sit overnight. So maybe a, maybe every couple hours I might uh, put it in a different position or just make sure that it's, that it's still soaking up and then just leave that. And that antifreeze will soak into the wood and swell up the wood and keep your ax head tight. And that's it. That's how quick and easy it is. So um, that's all I've ever done and I've never had a problem. The reason that you don't use water, I know a lot of people just soak their axes in water, but it, the water's just gonna evaporate again and it's just gonna dry out. And every time you do that, it's gonna get looser quicker. So this is a bit more stabilizing and it's going to swell up that wood and stay in that wood and not get it loose as quick. So that's why I use this instead of water. So hopefully that helps some of you. Uh, I think it's a great tip. I actually learned this um, uh, from a guy on Instagram uh, who lives in Ecuador. His name is uh, EC Condor, I believe. Anyways, he's a very smart man, always gives me lots of good wisdom. And uh, so thank you for that, that piece of advice. So uh, now we're going to go uh, fell a tree, split it up, make a fire and uh, show you this thing in action. So on the way out here, I was thinking about when was the last time I sharpened this ax? And I think it's been months. <laughs> I've left it out at shelters. I've been using it a couple days a week for the last uh, few months and it has not been sharpened. And it's fine. I mean, it's, it's never been a hair razor sharp, but it holds an edge really well. As you're kind of probably gathering at this point, I'm not super precious with my tools. And I'm not also trying to do fancy feather sticks here. I'm just scuffing this, these logs up a little bit so it'll catch a flame. I usually don't actually do this, but just for the sake of demonstrating a little bit more on the ax and what you can do with it. Thought I'd do that. That's probably fine.
So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, just read you a few of the comments I got on my last review of this axe two years ago. Um, not the nice ones, there's lots of nice ones, we're going to read you a few of the mean ones uh, just for fun. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, especially not me, but uh, some people say mean things and I, I don't get why. <laughs> I don't understand how they, uh, why they decide that they know better sitting in front of the computer than someone who spends half their life out in the woods. All right. Let's just do that right now. Okay, so here is one of the, uh, the comments I got. These axes are overrated and overpriced for what you get. They're all right for amateurs, as they generally don't know any better. What is it that this axe isn't capable of? And what is the difference between an amateur and a pro? <laughs> uh, as far as uh, using an axe. I mean, I guess there's professional um, tree harvesters and fellers, but uh, I don't know. I think they're doing mostly... If the, if the pros are using big, huge machines to just walk through here and just swipe the whole tree up with a big arm. And anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, someone else said it's it's like a baseball bat with a metal with metal on the end. Fanboy reviews. To me, this handle does not not feel like a baseball bat. I do have a Council of Tools axe, and I, I kind of know what they mean. Like it's a big, bulky handle, and it's hard to get a good grip on. But to me, this is a really nice, slim, slender handle, and I really enjoy that. I think it feels great. There's no need to, for me to adjust it. I know people like to shave down their axe handles, and, but why make it weaker? Because it feels a little nicer in the hand. I mean, just make sure it's strong. Um, another comment, he continues to diss the handle. Um, and then it says, as for your skills, work on your accuracy and learn how to actually fell a tree. First you make the directional notch and then the back cut. You don't chew around things like a beaver and then swing as, as axe as you walk. On the topic, kneel down. You're not doing much good with your back bent over like that. That's not bad advice. I mean, uh, I do definitely, when I'm felling bigger trees, I definitely cut a notch out in the front. I do a relief cut in the back. I get down low if I'm swinging hard with my axe. And I will admit that in the first axe review video, when I watch it now, I do cringe a little bit because I'm swinging so fast because I'm just trying to show how fast I can cut down a tree, which is a stupid, a stupid exercise or a stupid way to prove the quality of an axe. So uh, it was a little stupid for me to be swinging an axe that fast. But as you get older, you look back and you notice those things. Uh, but I still stand behind the beaver two method, especially for smaller trees. Anyways. So that's just uh, a few of the comments that we get as YouTubers. So uh, if you see negative comments out there, please uh, join in and stand up for, uh, for us people trying to make content for you. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a great ax. I'm two years in as of today. I really love it. And uh, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my day. So thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice people, be nice to earth.